Hey guys, I'm not off this weekend, but hopefully you are, and what better, better way to relax than with your old pal Netflix, or maybe even my videos, who knows. Um, but I have another list of best of Netflix for you that I think are worth a watch, so let's get the list going. First up for action, I decided to go with Underworld. Now this is, in my opinion, the better version of Vampires vs. Werewolves. Forget about Twilight, everything you know about like vampires and werewolves fighting and all that stuff, and like feuding. Uh, this was much better, although for some reason it's actually rated lower on like Rotten Tomatoes and stuff than Twilight for some reason. Um, I don't think it was that bad, uh, but it's definitely worth watching. It's Vampires vs. Werewolves. What can you say even better than that? I mean, who doesn't want to see that battle? Like, it's just awesome to see these monsters duking it out, and uh, there's definitely a story involved. They're fighting over... Um, this like hybrid, who, this guy who can be like a hybrid between vampires and werewolves. Um, but it's definitely worth a watch. Definitely worth checking out. Forget about Twilight, like I said. This is much better. For comedy, I decided to go with Hot Fuzz. Now this is probably one of my favorite um, comedies or action films, I suppose. It kind of works in both. Um, but this one was from Simon Pegg, uh, Nick Frost, and Edgar Wright. Um, they did uh, also Shaun of the Dead, which is another amazing uh, action comedy zombie film. Um, but this was their attempt at like a buddy cop type of film. Uh, Nicholas Angel, played by Simon Pegg, gets transferred or promoted rather um, because he does such a great job on the force in London. Uh, he gets transferred to like this small village and things aren't quite as good as they seem to be on the outside. Uh, there's a lot of things going on underneath the uh, surface there. Um, don't want to ruin it for you guys, but you know, that's basically the premise. Um, it's tons of laughs, tons of action, definitely worth a watch. For drama, I decided to go with The Pursuit of Happiness. Now, this was before Jaden Smith, went, like when Jaden Smith was all cute and before he went all like philosophical and crazy. Um, but this is a story of like Will Smith and his son, uh, not like their portrayals of themselves, but of this uh, man named Chris Gardner, I believe his name is. Um, but he really struggled. He basically lived on the streets. He was a salesman who lost his job. He ended up getting an internship and now he's a successful businessman. But well, this is a story of that struggle of after he lost his job, him and his son mainly spent time on the streets. It's a bit of a heart wrencher at times. It may make you cry, um, but it's definitely worth a watch. Like I said, uh, Jaden Smith was much cuter. Um, he's not as weird as he is now. He's not wearing like white Batman costumes, the weddings and all that stuff. Um, but like I said, it's definitely worth the emotional uh, value of it. And you kind of appreciate your life and what you have from watching it, which is kind of a good feeling as well. For family, I decided to go with The Road to El Dorado. Now, this, in my opinion, is probably one of the most underrated uh, animated films ever. This one was from DreamWorks. The other most underestimated uh, uh, animated films, in my opinion, uh, is from Disney. It's called Atlantis, The Lost Empire. But we're talking about The Road to El Dorado. This is about two Spaniards who are... Um, con men, basically, uh, in olden times, who, decide, who find this map, and they go on a quest to find uh, the lost city of gold, El Dorado. Um, and they get a little bit more than they bargained for. Things aren't quite as they seemed. Um, there's a bit of, not necessarily a twist, but they definitely learn something from the experience. And like I said, this is definitely an underrated uh, animation film. Uh, this was before the whole um, computer animate. well, it might still be computer animated, but not like fully rendered like Pixar type of stuff. Um, but it's just an amazing movie to watch. Definitely underrated. It's a lot of fun. It's got a ton of great comedy. It's actually got really good action and adventure as well. And I think it's definitely a movie that kids should see in order to better appreciate the animation that they have now. For documentary this week, I decided to go with Bigger, Faster, Stronger. Now this is a documentary that's kind of interesting to me. I'm not sure if it may interest you. But it's about Chris Bell, who actually made another recommendation that I did called Trophy Kids. Um, but this one, he kind of points the camera at himself and his family and society, more or less. It's about the use of steroids. Now, it mainly focuses on his family, but also includes like sports, entertainment, wrestling, um, you name it. But it's actually kind of eye-opening, and I thought it was interesting because there are certain things that you learn about like the entertainment industry, sort of wrestling. Like, these people got into steroids sort of following their dreams and idolizing people like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, um, certain like famous wrestlers. It goes more in depth than that. But I mean, it was just definitely, like I said, it was eye-opening because you don't really consider it when you're watching it. When you're a fan of these things, 
you don't think about the steroid use. But when you watch this, it's kind of like it kind of takes you back a little bit. Uh, it talks about steroids in baseball, like steroids in cycling, steroids in wrestling, like I said. Um, all these different aspects that you really don't think about when you're a fan of this sport. Um, but it's definitely like dark underbelly that you don't think about. And this kind of exposes it and talks about it in a more, not necessarily family-friendly way, but it takes that family experience because this is happening to him and his family as well because his brothers and even himself had taken steroids. So it's just an interesting story to watch and to follow not only his journey, but seeing how it affects other people, seeing other people on steroids. Now on to horror, I decided to go with Would You Rather. Um, this one's kind of interesting. It's about a woman who is trying to take care of her brother who is sick. Um, she's going to all these doctors with him and she's trying to pay for it by herself. Their parents had recently died. So she's basically on her own. Um, she gets invited to this game. Now, she doesn't really know what the game is, um, but once she goes, it's not quite the game she was anticipating. Uh, it's a bunch of people who basically commit, not necessarily suicide or anything like that, or murder, but they play a game where it's kind of like truth or dare, but a lot further than that. Like, it gets pretty deep. Um, some of the things that they have to go through are kind of gross. It's kind of like Saw, but on a less gory side. It's more of a intellectual, like, what would you do? Basically, would you rather? They give, they're give they given choices. Would you rather do this or would you rather do this? But neither are really desirable choices. Um, it's definitely a movie that... It may irk you at times, I'm not going to lie. It kind of got to me maybe once or twice where you kind of got to do this. Because you just don't want to see that. Um, but, like I said, it's a horror movie that sort of is in that sort of line of Saw. And uh, not necessarily hostile, but sort of not necessarily torture films. But I guess along that line where you have to choose, you know, which is the lesser of the two evils. Which is kind of an interesting concept to me. Up for classics this week, I decided to go with Pulp Fiction. Now, I'm not really sure how Netflix categorizes their classics because they have various films and classics that sometimes don't really make sense to me. Um, but Pulp Fiction should definitely be in there, but again, it's not. So don't check the classic section for Pulp Fiction. Um, it's probably under, like, action or drama. Eh, maybe not even action. Uh, probably, like, drama or thriller. Um... I would love to tell you the story of Pulp Fiction, but there's so many different stories to it, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, it's classic Tarantino, that I think is like one of his first breakout films, um, and it's definitely one of the most interesting. It's probably one of the most critically acclaimed of Tarantino's films. Uh, it's got John Travolta, Uma Thurman, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Tim Roth, um, Bruce Willis, Bing Rames. There's a ton of people in this film, so I mean, even if you don't want to watch it for the story factor, um, you have to watch it because it's such a classic film. Um, it's one of those movies that you have to watch at least once in your life, if not several times, because it is one of those great films. Um, but like I said, definitely worth a watch. It is a classic, so you definitely have to see it at least once. For the final pick, it's going to be TV shows. Now this one is kind of a little bit near and dear to my heart, I guess you could say. Um, it's Bob Ross, Beauty is Everywhere. If you don't know who Bob Ross is, you should learn for sure, and you should definitely watch this series. They put on 26 episodes of Bob Ross. Um, Bob Ross is a painter. He has the most silky, smooth voice, possibly since, like, Morgan Freeman. He's got, like, this afro. He's this kind of, like, weirdish white guy. But, I mean, it's so soothing to watch him paint. And don't get frustrated if you've never seen Bob Ross before. If he makes a beautiful painting... Um, and then he decides to throw this big black streak in the middle of it, um, you're going to freak out because he ruined this beautiful painting. But he'll fix it. He'll make it a happy little tree or make some bushes and some friends for the bushes or something like that. Like, it's just so soothing to watch. Sometimes I just put it on to go to sleep because Bob Ross is just such a soothing thing to watch. L watching him paint, listening to a t him talk about what he's doing or, like, different things he'll talk about randomly throughout this uh, episode. It's just very soothing to watch. It's just something very relaxing, and I enjoy it, and I think you would too. Well, guys, those are my picks for Netflix this week. I hope you have a great weekend. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you happen to miss any of my videos, make sure you go back on my channel and check them out. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Like always, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share these videos, and we'll see you guys in the next one.